Hey everyone, welcome to Seattle Celtics Masterclass. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at um, playing in a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3. Three, three. Uh, I'll be looking at our positions first and the names of the positions. I'll then be looking at um, how our team likes to play out from the back, what we look like in possession of the ball, and then what we look like out of possession. Um, so, uh, just to start off, I'll go through the positions. Um, we have our goalkeeper, we have our three centre backs, right centre back, centre back, left centre back. We have our wing backs, who are the two wide players, left wing back, right wing back. We've got our two centre middies, we've got an attacking centre mid here, and we've got our two strikers. Um, so what we're going to look at first is going to be um, playing out of the back. Um, so how I like to do this one is we'll drop our two centre backs to either side of the six yard box. Our goalkeeper will start in the middle given the opposition um, more trouble and uh, not knowing whether to float one side of the field or the other side of the field. It allows them to spread out for us. Um, we'll have our centre back at the top of the box. We'll have our two wing backs giving us our width on either side and um, our two centre midfielders will operate in behind our centre back who has basically become a number six so they'll operate in these little gaps and then our top three will spread out along the back line trying to keep their four defenders back um, I'll put these blues in as defenders but we're trying to occupy all four of their back line to make sure that they stay back to give these people as much space as possible. If we had our centre mid stay here and our two strikers stay here it kind of invites this pressure on a little bit more so so that is why we do that. I'm going to take these back off. So first of all we're going to look at the different options that are um, available to the players when we are playing out from the back. Um, we have <coughs> the goalkeeper playing the ball short to this centre back on this side and then the different options that they have available would be one playing this wing back, two playing the centre midfielder, three playing to the centre back or the number six. Four is going to be a switch to this player or in through the goalkeeper, which is totally fine. And fifth one is going to be if the space allows, they can dribble. Finally, for my older teams that have a little bit more of a capability of kicking the ball further, just if we want to get out straight away, um, we would hit, look to hit one of the strikers and get support from there. So there are the different options that we have available to us. Um, the aim would be not to have players as robots and to be able to make decisions for themselves so they can kind of deal with any kind of situation that the opposition throws at them. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples that we kind of look at uh, during our sessions during the year and what we see mostly in games. Um, the first one is going to be coming up against um, two strikers. Again, two strikers what I'd really want to see is us playing the ball short and then as the striker presses straight straight on our easy option would be to play out to the wing back and then we were out of their defensive line or their first uh, defensive line and we can go and attack. Um, different option would be if this wide player cuts off our wing back our option for the center back would be to play into the center midfielder and then to play out to the wing back if need be or the centre midfielder could turn themselves and run as well, either way. <clears throat> but that would be the option to get out. Um, so that's up, up against a, a front two. Um, if the opposition play um, a front three, which they often do, again, different things that we can look at. First one would be if, again, the wide player is the first one in, we still have this ball onto the centre mid and out to our wing back. If the front three, the centre player decides to put on pressure, again, what I'd be thinking about is um, where do we have numbers up? Um, and this player switching the ball across to the six yard box um, to the other centre back will then give options to the centre back, whether they play into this gap, whether they play out to the wing back, or depending on what way this person is pressing, they could obviously hit the centre midfielder and out the other side. 
So they're the different options that we have when playing from the back. Uh, what we'll look at now is when our team has possession of the ball, when we get out from the back or just in transition and open play. So what I'll be doing is I'll be looking at it in our defensive third, middle third, and attacking third. And the one little thing that we'll be thinking about all the time is uh, getting, <clears throat> keeping the ball safe, keeping possession of the ball, and um, trying to dictate the play. Uh, so as we are looking to play, what we'll look at as well is um, keeping the ball conservative and safe in kind of these areas. And then as it gets progressively higher up the field, we're kind of looking to take more chances and be more aggressive with the ball. So as we play out, so we let's just say we were coming up against two strikers when we're playing out from the back. The big thing that I'm looking for all the time is our players to have triangles and diamonds as much as we can around the field to make it so we have multiple options on the ball. So playing against the front two, similar to what we had in playing out from the back, depending on which way this player is running. If they're coming in from this side, we can play out to the wing back and progress on down the field or come back inside again the wing back and do this bring it back inside if they decide to close off the wing back we have a ball into the center mid and depending on if there's pressure behind or not they can play back or we can play out and the one good thing about this shape having three at the back it allows us to get out on the weak side so if we manage to force all their play over to this side and we get the ball in and then out to this side it allows our weak side um, center back get out and join possession or join in <clears throat> a little bit higher up the field final little point that i want to make when we're playing out from the back is if we get caught if this player has the ball and our center back is looking like they're going to get not really be able to offer an option as a drop we're going to have our goalkeeper always uh, available and this center back, instead of dropping and closing up the space to have two players back here, our center back is going to step high. That will now force a decision to be made by the striker. If the striker goes with the to try and block down the goalkeeper's pass, the hope would be that this player would play into the center back and we're out again. If the full uh, the striker goes with our player, now the ball back to the center back, our goalkeeper is on, who can then switch the play and we're out again. Again, trying to keep it as safe as possible. Um, we always do have this drop option to the goalkeeper if we're in trouble, and then just our movement and our shapes to try and get out from the back again. So as we progress, progress higher up the field, <clears throat> the little things that I'd be looking for our team to do is to stay patient on the ball, again keeping it safe as much as we can um, and switching the field um, the big thing for our team is our wing backs to try and get in down the sides um, so our, our plan would be to try and shift the midfielders and shift their defenders across the field so i'll just throw in a midfield four and back four for this team <clears throat> When we're looking to keep the ball, <clears throat> again, simple options. We play wide in an ideal, well, in an ideal scenario, their defenders will shift across to try and block this space, to try and make it difficult for us. All the space then coming onto this side of the field with our opposite wing back keeping their width. So getting the ball in and getting the ball across and out to this side as quickly as possible to try and create this situation if this again if we do it too slowly and this team gets across again and blocks everything what we're looking to do is get the ball work the ball in whatever way we can to get the ball in and out and across the other side again just to try and disorganize the defenders the aim would be to do this enough that maybe these get tired or there's some sort of lack lack of communication and we can then start utilizing the spaces that we've created but again we're trying to keep things nice and simple trying to keep the ball for long periods of time to try and um to confuse and annoy the defenders um one last little thing that i'd like our striker our center midfielders to do a bit more of is trying to find our strikers feet again this is done to bring in their defenders to compact the space in here, 
make it nice and narrow so that when we get the ball out and we can play wide, we have spaces down the channels on either side. Uh, finally, in attack, so this is it in the um, <clears throat> attacking third, what we'll be looking to do is get the ball wide, create numbers of situations, and inevitably, well, hopefully, create chances and score goals. And um, the ways we're going to do that uh, with this shape, so I'll just kind of want to show you very quickly with this shape. The big thing for me is when we're in this shape, we can effectively have numbers up all across their back line. So if we can see here in this area, 2v1, in this area for this defender, it's a 2v1, for this area, it's a 2v1, and for the final area, it is a 2v1. So anytime we have the ball, the whole point of this is to try and make defenders a little bit more like confused and on edge trying to figure out should they stay inside or should they go with the ball, should they stay inside or should they go with this player and the hope is to eventually they make a, a bad decision and we can get in behind, make crosses or create drilling opportunities and go and score ourselves. So the big thing that we're looking for again when we're playing here is uh, combinations to get in behind, we're looking for dribbles to try and get past their players, crosses into the box. We're looking for our strikers and attacking center mids to combine to get in behind. And we're looking then finally for our center mids to try and get in behind with late runs into the box. Whether that is after combining with strikers or whether that is coming in off crosses. Uh, we have, uh, I have a good little video I'll add to this of my GO3s doing this exact thing. We have our <clears throat> one of our center backs actually gets high and dribbles. We have our wing back out wide, center mid, our striker in here, and uh, we attract this player in, we get it out to our wing back and we cross the ball in. And as we cross the ball in, we have um, five players, I believe, in the box to try and attack it. Um, and we've still got our safety net in our holding mid and our two center backs. But ideally, this is what we're looking to do. Create overloads, get down the sides or through the middle, create goal scoring opportunities and hopefully score goals. Uh, so what we'll look at now is <clears throat> when we don't have the ball. So when we don't have the ball, for me, what I like to do is I like to get our team into a medium block. <clears throat> medium block is kind of allowing the opposition to, to play out, to encourage them to play a short pass first and then kind of go and be uh, somewhat aggressive in our pressure to try and make play predictable, to try and um, force them sideways and backwards and to hopefully win the ball back and as high up the field as we can. So uh, in this example, as you can see, I've gone into a 3-4-3. Three, three. So again, just to go over the positions, we have our two strikers and our attacking center mid. We've got our two wing backs and we've got our two center midfielders and we've got our three center backs and our goalkeeper is staying high. The reason for the goalkeeper staying high and staying connected is <clears throat> to prevent any easy through balls or long balls to go over the top. If the goalkeeper stayed all the way back, this space would be very inviting. It might force our defenders to drop off a little bit and then allow massive spaces for their opposition attackers to work in. So very, very important that the goalkeeper stays high and allows these center air defenders to stay connected with the midfielders. So as we're playing, um, if the ball for me is with the eater of the center backs, the center midfield or the center of the front three is the person who's going to put on pressure. As they go, they need cover. So we, we're trying to prevent passing lanes in through into their center midfielders. As the ball moves, we look to move and put pressure on. We're looking to make it very difficult for them to play these ones, and they're just going to play the ball sideways the whole time. Okay, sideways and backwards. If the ball does come sideways, we're looking for again us to block off the ball into the middle giving them difficult difficult angles to try and play in their safe option is obviously back which is totally fine for us or to make play super predictable for our wing back so as the ball comes to here if we've blocked off this successfully the wing back can start edging their bets and thinking that we can get in um, on this side so as the ball's traveling we can get there put on pressure it's kind of like setting a trap try and win the ball back and go forward and attack so that would be the main aim for the front three, making it very difficult for the back four to play out, 
making play predictable then for the next players in our lines <clears throat> to allow them an easy opportunity to defend. As we progress forward, so let's just say they have beaten our front three and they get into the midfield. The big thing for me with this midfield is to stay compact and condense in the middle and we want to try and force the play wide. We do not want the ball going straight into, our, into the center. We want to try and force um, all the play to the side. So the, <clears throat> the midfield too and the wing backs stay connected. Uh, they're looking to scan and shield and block off passing lanes into the strikers. So it's very, very important for the, the center backs to be talking to the midfielders as the ball moves looking for the midfielders to move they don't have to put all out pressure on the ball but just enough to engage and force the player to go sideways or backwards uh, that's mainly what i want our midfielders to do is to be blocking off that obviously if we can win the ball back if maybe there is a bad pass to one of the center midfielders that we can get in on if the um the center midfielders have a bad touch if they face their own goal we can go and we can apply a bit more pressure and force them back uh, if we move on a little bit more if the ball comes into these wide areas down into the channels if they just kind of panic and kick the ball into the corners what i'd like us to do as a defensive unit is we're dropping off if the closest player is the one to apply pressure so in this case it's the right center back will apply pressure i would like for my wing back to get back inside and offer a good cover these players are obviously going to drop a little bit more <clears throat> this instance with our wing back again coming back in as our three at this point if they had control possession i would hope that my attacking arm my attacking center mid is somewhat back to help and this is kind of what our shape would look like again we're condensing one side of the field if they manage to do a 70 yard switch over there fair play to them but it's generally not going to happen um we're hopefully providing good cover options again to force this player backwards if they look up and see two players in their path they're more than likely going to do this um, if there was only one they'd probably take them on and we want to fill these gaps so that's where our fullback would go as the ball comes higher and higher up the field the big option or the big thing for my defenders is to one block crosses so get nice and tight to this player forcing them down the line and trying to block crosses and force them play backwards um, as we get closer and closer to our box, our defenders are going to have a good open body shape, make sure that they can see any players that are around them. Our opposite full back, our opposite wing back is going to drop back more into central role. Our two center mids are going to be um, dropping back and our attacking center mid would kind of be the free player um, to come back on the weak side. So if an example, if the ball is here, our two center mids are here, our attacking center mid can get back on the weak side to make it a three. Um, this is then so hopefully going to force the play backwards and as we go backwards we can look to step higher and get back into our shape that we were just in and um, so that is how we like to play in a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2 um, playing out from the back in possession and out of possession thanks